Hi, this is Tracy Cook with the Montana State Library. And today I will be demonstrating how to register for an event <clears throat> where it shows up on your to-do list and then how to add a continuing education track in Aspen. I have posted in the chat a couple of links to some step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, so you can follow along if you'd like, or um, you're welcome to just watch this demonstration and then afterwards we'll have you test it out if you want. So I am at the Aspen homepage, <clears throat> and right now I am not logged in. Technically, you could search the events calendar without being logged in. However, I recommend just logging into Aspen first. Doing so saves you some steps uh, in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And for many of you, when you log in, <clears throat> you're going to be using an ePass account. Because I'm a state employee, I'm just going in a slightly different way. Works the same though. And I just wanna point out that you use the yellow login button, not the login at the top of the screen. Thank you, Joe. Yes. <clears throat> so here I am back at Aspen, but this time you can tell I'm logged in because you see my name. And so let's just say there's an event that I want to attend. So I'm going to click on this purple calendar and it's going to take me in to see our events calendar. And sometimes there's a little bit of a delay as all of the events are loading, but you can tell that it's working because generally you see a white circle going up at the top. Like many things, there are multiple ways to search for an event. If you know the date of the event, you can obviously just use this calendar and go directly to the event you want to register for. You can also do a search for an event. So I'll just go ahead and type in Aspen. And the system will search for any events that have Aspen in the title or the description. So when it comes up, if you scroll down to the bottom, that's where you see your search results. And so you can get to the events this way. You can also, by the way, just a little hint, add them into your CE credit. And Joe's going to be talking more about that in the last session of the Aspen Basics course. So I'm going to scroll back up here. And I will go ahead and delete this. <clears throat> And one other feature that's kind of nice when you're searching for an event is to use this advanced filtering and show. And I find this handy when I'm actually looking for like a continuing education credit in a certain course, a uh, certain subject area. So I choose continuing education. Don't know about you. I generally don't have enough collection management and technical services credits. So I choose those two and I click search. And so this is a way you can see if there's any continuing education events happening in the future. One of the reasons why it's handy to use Aspen to register for an event is it automatically counts your continuing education credits if the event has continuing education associated with it. The other thing that's handy for us at the State Library is sometimes we do need to keep track of who wants to attend an event. So these events are all ones that were either in the past and were in collection management and technical services or they're going to be happening in the future. So I'm going to go back up here and reset this and I'm going to actually show you how to register for an event and I'm just going to use the calendar widget to do that. And so I have created a fake event called test event for Aspen demonstration. I'm going to click on that event. And I will say I am an administrator within Aspen, and so my screen might look slightly different from yours, but you will see this information that is in the middle of the screen, including this blue bar that has register now. If you've already registered for an event, it will tell you that. So I'm going to click register now, and it will ask me to please wait. And then this is a step I think people forget. They forget to actually just click the submit button and you do need to click the submit button to finish the process. And again, my screen will look a little different because I'm an administrator. This part should look like what you will see on your screen. 
So what Aspen does once I've registered for an event is it will send me an email reminder and they usually come about a week before the event and then the day before. Aspen will also put this event on my to-do list. So over here on the right, there's a blue box and there's something called Aspen Admin. I'm gonna click on that. Aspen Admin is kind of like command central. It's your Aspen and it gives you all of the features um, that allows you to kind of make edits within it. And you can see I have a to-do list here on the right. And on that to-do list is the event I just registered for on October 31st. You can also see I have some other uh, to-dos on this as well. So if you're logging into Aspen, you, you will see events you have registered for on your to-do list. Tracy, this is Joe. I'm just going to run in. I, I sometimes get questions from people who are worried that they didn't complete their registration and they want me to check to see if they're registered for an event, which is fine, but you can also check yourself by going to this page if, it, if that event is listed on the to-do on the to-do list, then you registered. Thanks, Joe. That's actually a great quick way to find out if you're registered. So the last thing I'm going to show in my demonstration is how to add a continuing education track. Because for most people, they're using Aspen either to update their library's information or they want to uh, track their continuing education credits in order to go for Montana State Library certification. So on the right, there's a blue box and it says continuing education. And so I'm going to click on that. And this is going to be changing slightly. However, this process will work the same. So up here at the top, these are continuing education credits. And Joe is going to cover kind of how to add continuing education credits in the last session. What I'm going to be showing you today is actually the first step, which is to add a certification track. And so if I scroll down, I already have an existing certification track. However, I can add another one. Public library directors are required to go for the library administrator track. Everyone else can choose what track they want to go for. And it's perfectly okay to add both and just see where you end up with your credits. Aspen will allow you to add multiple tracks and it will uh, keep track of your progress. That's what's handy about going ahead and adding a certification track is then you're letting Aspen do the work of tracking the number of credits you have in each category. And so I'm going to go ahead and add Montana State Library Certification Library Staff Track. And I'm just going to do that by clicking Go. And what it's going to do is change to a page where I have a short form that I need to complete. And it will pre-populate the information for me. The begin date, if this is the very first time you are applying for certification for the State Library, then you can use today's date or whatever date makes sense. Because for instance, maybe you took a class last month and you want to start last month. If you have already been certified by the State Library, then what your begin date needs to be is basically like the day after your certification expires. And correct me if I'm wrong on that, Joe, because that is kind of a tricky if thing want, to explain. You want to choose the date that it was issued, actually. The date that it was issued, okay. Because your begin date is going to track out four years, and that will be the day that your old certificate expires. So they definitely choose the issued date of your certificate. Thank you. I'm glad that I asked you about that one. So what Joe just explained about in four years, you know, your credits will begin to expire. That's the end date is calculated automatically based on that begin date. And that's why she mentioned start with your issue date. The validation position is the person who reviews your credits to confirm that yes, you did take this continuing education. So if you're a library staff member, it would be your library director. If you are a public library director, it would be like your board chair. If you're a library director of an academic or special or school library, it's going to be your supervisor. And Joe can work with you if that person is not on this list because we do have, you know, academic librarians and others who are choosing to become certified by this work with you. 
but you can choose a validation position. And so I'm just going to go ahead and you can type the first uh, few letters of their name. So I will put my boss on the list. And so at the end of uh, when I've earned my credits, then Jenny can review my credits or she can review them actually as we go along and just confirm that yes, I did take those classes. If I wanted to, I could um, choose to have other people notified when I earn my uh, certification. I'm not going to choose to do that, but you can select them from this uh, drop down menu if there's somebody within the library community that you would want um, them to know that you have earned certification. You can also ask us to send a letter to a government official. Um, some public library directors do like to let their local government officials know when they've become certified. In this case, I'm just going to leave Jenny on the list and I'm going to go ahead and click save. And so it's telling me that my record has been created. And up at the top is the information that I entered or the system entered for me. If I scroll down, I will see more information, including how I'm doing in my um, journey to get my certification. And so in this particular track, I need 60 hours in these different categories. And so Aspen has taken what I've put in the system so far and it's letting me know how many credits I need to meet uh, the requirement to become certified. Once I have that number of credits, the system will give me a little message saying I'm eligible to submit my certification. And then below that, I can just see the individual credits that I have earned as part of my certification. Joe, is there anything you want to add? Anything that I missed? No, we're going to, um, like just like Tracy was saying, we are going to talk about how to submit for certification next month, uh, actually early December. We're gonna, we moved that last uh, session to early December. Um, and I think the thing to remember is that you mentioned it, Tracy, but I just want to emphasize it, that, that your credits expire once they're four years old. So um, you, you can take as long as you want to get that first certificate, although library directors only have four years from the day that they start their job um, in order to meet the library standards. But everybody else can take as long as they want to do it to earn a certificate, but their credits, their older credits will start to expire. So it's best to kind of stick to that four year target and, and, um, uh, and get your certificate application in. I think that's pretty much it. All right. Well, that's it for my demonstration then. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing. And then at this point,